We are looking to answer the ultimate questions of why, how, and how we, by meeting with students and younger fo folks, and asking them to think about and answer what drives youth to engage with civil society. I hope you enjoy listening to the conversations that we have had. This is a podcast called Walk, Talk, Listen, an attempt to connect people and make this world a bit better by sharing opinions and experiences based on the belief that everyone's perspective is true, albeit partial. My name is Maurice Blom, and I would like to welcome you to yet another episode of Walk, Talk. Today I had uh, conversations with two students from Windesheim University in the Netherlands, and their names are Mona and Hannah. Okay, you know, um, so first of all, thanks for, for your willingness to participate. Um, the, the, the title of this little project of the Innovation Hub is What Makes You Tick? And actually, that's also my, my first question. What makes you tick? Um, and we, s I don't know if you were both at, at the presentation that I did or the session, but I asked you, uh, Monio, what drives you, right? Or what makes it that you wake up in the no, wake up you automatically, hopefully, <laughs> but what you get, why you get out of bed. So, this is similar to that. So, so what makes you tick? Um, and then, um, related with that is what do you think? Uh, your fellow students, you know, what makes them tick? Is that different than, than how you are in general? So who would like to start? Um, I can start at least with the first part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> About the second part, I maybe need to think of it. Um, but I think for me, um, what makes me tick is... Uh, or something that really motivates me is the idea that I could change something. I mean, that's also why I study this program. I feel like I'm still very passionate <laughs> um, about that, about the idea that I can contribute something to uh, maybe a bit more justice, a bit more fairness in the world. Um, yeah, social justice is also a big topic, I think, for me. Um, I feel like having having such a goal uh, is something that really motivates me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and do you remember you know, when that started? Where does it come from? Um, I think I was always a person who really tried to... Try to connect different groups of people even if I myself was a really social introverted person I try to I don't know integrate different people and always on the social side um and yeah I don't know I feel like I just have an awareness for that or that's just something that um yeah really makes me feel for example yesterday i watched a movie um about um an olympian and refugee who came from syria to mm -hmm. germany it's actually it really happened <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. so uh and she sh she's a swimmer and yeah i don't know it was uh, about her um her way of coming to, from syria to Germany and they needed to cross the water to Lesbos. They needed to be in the um at the boats and I cried the whole time because it was so sad the thought that people actually right now are doing this. Mm -hmm. So I think that's yeah, something yeah, yeah. really drives me. Okay. But there is not a 
it was not a, a vivid memory where you think like, oh, you know, when I was four or eight years old, I saw this and that made a mm. lot of a big impression on me. And that's why I... No, the only thing I remember that I think at least my mom also has this. I think my mom is also yeah. really aware and my my um uncle uh lived on the streets for many years mm. so i feel i always also felt a connection to people who are living yeah. on the streets okay. Okay. Anna, what what about you what makes you tick why I did you I get out very... of bed this morning <laughs> <laughs> i think i can very much relate to this like i also it sounds so cheesy but i also want it prove the world and I think everyone has to contribute their part however big or small it might be and this is my part basically studying this and then hopefully actually making a difference at some point yeah I'm also so, so when when uh, do you have a moment where you thought okay this is you know this is what I want to study and because you know I would like to change the world or would like to contribute well, to be honest, there's no sad moment. I think I also always had the helping thing. Like I wanted to help people, which is, mm -hmm. yeah. But so I've always been like a student body or I've tutored people or I've always been in these social things and like try to help people. And now I'm trying to be more professional about it with the study. Um, Yeah, but I don't think there was a memory or like a moment where I was like, oh yeah, that's that's it. And and were you stimulated by your you know caretakers by your uh, parents or the other people to do this or no you wanted to to do it or I mean my parents at least my mom was also a very social person but mm -hmm. I mean they were very happy about my engagement and my uh, the things I were doing but they didn't push me to do it or anything I think it was more from me. Mm -hmm. And when you look around to your fellow students, do they have some, you know, do you feel that they have a similar drive uh, or is that uh, different? I think most of them have a similar drive, sometimes even more, not extreme, but more. Yeah. Um, but they all want to, like, because this is such a hippie study program, basically, they all want to improve the world uh with different topics but they all have a similar motivation i would say i know there's some exceptions that are really like i want to succeed in this economy or i want to get a good job yeah stuff like that but those are the exceptions in this study at least okay what do you think mona yeah i think i can agree to that i would also think especially in our study program everyone or everyone who really likes this study has have this passion or goal yeah and and uh, i don't know if you, if you have a lot of uh, connection with other students other young people um and if so what do you what do you see there you know outside of your little bubble of uh, <laughs> university uh, for me, it was very interesting. I helped out on the open day of Windesheim, like of the university. And so I was trying to talk to people about our study. So there I realized, like there I realized again that I'm in this bubble because yeah. many young people, they see that there are problems in this world, mm -hmm. but they don't feel the responsibility or they are overwhelmed to, yeah, do something, I would say. <laughs> it's also so judgmental but no i'm not i'm not judging them um which is very interesting to see because most people were like well yeah that sounds very interesting but no i don't want to spend my whole life with this mm. yeah i would also say i have many friends and there yeah, are people i know who uh, in germany who study study something and not actually that important for them and it's more mm. the focus is more on the free time and on enjoying life partying being in berlin having a good time um and i think that's um more the social gatherings and i don't know having a good time is more for them something to get out of bed mm -hmm. okay. or i don't know maybe it's also that 
people are not really talking mm -hmm. about what drives them so much. Yeah. I could be, may maybe I'm also judging that from the outside. Mm -hmm. You know, I've interviewed a lot of people in the last two years and and also about, you know, what do you see happening among the younger generation? And the majority of the older people are saying, you know, it's it's still, we still see a lot of, where do you, and my question is then, where do you see hope? And many of them always say, well, the younger generation, because they are so engaged. Um, do you agree with that? Well, to be honest, that's a surprise for me to hear because all the old elderly people I've talked to, they were always like, oh, you're so unpolitical. You're not doing anything. And only if it's comfortable for you, for example, with the Fridays for Future, mm -hmm. like many people were criticizing that because it was comfortable for students or not. But it wasn't outside of their comfort zone to go there for the protests. Mm -hmm. I would still say we are engaged, I hope. At least my friends. But I don't know. What am I being fan? Um Yeah, I I also think of course we are engaged and I think it's becoming even more. I mean I'm twenty five now and I feel like that younger generations are even more engaged um, and more political now because they're even more aware about what is happening in the world um yeah I, but i don't know if i would say that this gives me so much hope mm -hmm. <laughs> i think um of course this is good but i also feel like there is way more that needs to be done and it can't be only the younger generation mm -hmm. i think especially in politics it's a real problem that there are so many yeah, there's so many older people uh, mm -hmm. deciding things about the future. So, yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Are you um, involved in any justice or humanitarian work yourself at the moment? I'm not in the mom at the moment. Mm -hmm. Anna, what about you? No, me neither. I did, like, I was uh, in the student group for Amnesty International for. Two months, I think, but yeah, not anymore. My only two months, you didn't like what they were doing, or you did not have time. Oh, the group kind of dissolved itself, and then nothing happened anymore. So, mm. okay. Um. So, if if you would, um, you know, volunteer or be active, uh, for which cause or or issue would that be? Then, I mean, we. You typed a couple of things in in the survey before, but uh, maybe, maybe you can elaborate a little bit more in terms of. Um, I I I understand from you that it is difficult because you're so busy with the study. But if you would have time, what what you know, which issues um, are you concerned about and would like to be? Uh, you wish you could be active um, for. Uh, for me, it would definitely be something social. So if it's something about environment, I'm still passionate about it, but mm -hmm. I will be more invested in social projects. Um, also locally, so I can actually see that I'm making a difference. That would mm -hmm. be great. <laughs> um, yeah, but I have to think about specific things. Yeah, I think for me it's the same. Um, maybe uh, I think it would be a feminist topic for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, on the social side, um, I could imagine to um do something also in the gender topic um or inclusion or something. Um, I think there are very there are many interesting things. I think it also always depends on what possibilities are there, what kind of groups do you have? Do you have the time? And if you would, um, you know, if if you would have more time, if there would be more days in a week, um, 
would you then be more inclined to maybe, you know, start something with your friends or like-minded, um, you know, fellow students or, you know, join a, an organization? I think for me, it would be more about joining an organization, an organization at first mm -hmm. and maybe then later on start your own thing. But first, getting that experience also, like how it actually works. Um, yeah. yeah, for me, I think I like the idea to start something myself, but I think I also have difficulties to um, imagine that I am capable of this. So mm -hmm. maybe I underestimate myself or I, I tend to do that. And I think I tend to think maybe too negative about those things mm -hmm. that it's too much work or that i i'm not able to achieve this mm -hmm. um i could imagine um but overall i think it would be would be very nice for example a friend of mine um uh, started a um, collective a feminist queer porn collective um and they're doing some some awareness talks and stuff like that and uh, i think that's very cool actually so um i'm also looking always looking at them and think like oh i could also do something like that just start something like that but i also think um yeah i would need a bit more confidence or believe in myself a bit more mm. um can you tell a little bit more because uh, you've you've mentioned a couple of times, you know, um, that you're interested in in uh, feministic related issues. Why is that? Where does that come from? What are you worried about, or you know, you would like to contribute to? Um, yeah, I think uh, for me um, during the past, I don't know, four or five years, I. I've become more political and maybe um, I uh, connected more with certain kinds of people with my my social bubble. Um, and I think my social bubble is very left feminist uh, politic wise. Um, and through that, I uh, I engaged a lot with the topic. I talk a lot with people about it, about um, gender equality and stuff like that. Um, and I think through that, it's it has become an important topic for me. And also, I'm queer and I'm in a queer relationship. So um, I think that's why it's natural, uh, an important topic for me as well. And is it is it... Um... One is because you are observing, you know, injustices or uh, issues, or is it because you are experiencing it yourself, or both? Both, I would say. Um, I wouldn't say I'm super affected, but of course there are some small things I experience as a woman or as a queer person that, I don't know, People are disgusted when I kiss my girlfriend on the streets or something like that. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, so, sorry to hear that. Um, I can't even believe that in 2022 20, we still have these issues. And unfortunately, um, yeah, that's, I mean, the whole World Cup is around uh, that as well, right? So, yeah. um, Hannah, what about you? You know, you you mentioned social issues. So is there this, is there this, you know, can you maybe elaborate on that? What do you, you know, what do you see and what, yeah, that you get upset about and would like to do something about it? Okay. Um, for me, it's two topics mainly. So it's mm -hmm. inclusion. That's all. The, Mona and I would like the project we're doing is also about inclusion a lot. I'm very interested in that. But also gender equality. <laughs> Sorry to jump on that train too, but it is it is a topic. So those are my not passions, but interests, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um 
Is it an issue that you see on the campus as well, or is it more outside of the, of the university? In the society as a whole? I would say um, more outside, for sure. Um, I think students are relatively aware or about many things, but of course, sometimes I I see some sexist situations or, um, I don't know, people say difficult things or something like that. But I think overall, I have the impression that in whole society, it's way worse. Hmm. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I, I also have talked a lot about religion and spirituality with people in the last two years, and and especially, um, you know, how youths look at that and, and how they experience it. So I have a question to you uh, about it. You know, does religion or spirituality uh, or both play a, uh, a part in your uh, desire to create create a better world? To be honest, for me, not at all. I'm not religious. I'm not spiritual. I I just don't think it's my thing. And I don't really believe in anything. So for me, it doesn't play a role. No, hmm. It's more my desire and my worldview. Yeah. And is it something that, that, uh, um, how was that in your, in your family when you grew up? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, my family's not religious either. Like, I was never mm -hmm. baptized because they told me I could choose, and mm -hmm. I never did. And then at some point, I realized, well, I never chose because I don't believe in anything. Not not in anything, but not in a particular religion, at least. So, yeah, maybe I got that from them. <laughs> yeah. Assuming that when you talk about religion, you're more, more talking about the institutionalized religion. You know, the church. You don't go to church. Um yeah, that's that's well, yeah. Yeah. And and um, what about spirituality? Are you? <laughs> I'm really, really yeah. not a spiritual person. I don't. I even have a hard time meditating. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know. It's just not my thing. Mm -hmm. I have my beliefs and worldviews, but it's not spiritual, or it's more about my thought patterns. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mona, what about you? Um, yeah, for me, I would say it has changed. Um, I also was never really religious. I don't believe in God. And also my family background is not there's in my in my um, near family. There's mm -hmm. no one really who is really religious, I would say. Mm -hmm. Um, with spirituality, I would say, um, I had a time after high school, um, where I, um, mentally was feeling very bad and, um, couldn't really go to school and I just went to a really rough time mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, there I started to listen to some, podcasts uh, on the more spiritual side mm -hmm. um and doing more meditation and stuff like that and i think it helped me it's helped me to um see myself more connected to other people um and feeling this but i would say during the last two three years it yeah, we went away again. So now I'm I'm not feeling that spiritual again. It helped me to um see myself as a part of a bigger something. I don't know. They talked about a lot about the universe mm -hmm. <laughs> and believing in the universe that you're only a little stardust in the universe. I don't know, um, but. Yeah, I think it just helped me to feel connected and to feel like there is something and there's a reason why I am here. Mm -hmm. um, 
or maybe and also to believe more in dreams and purpose and stuff like that Anna, when you hear Mona talk, you know, what she just shared, what, what, what is your reaction? Do you think, like, I don't understand what she's talking about? Or, uh, yeah, although I, you know, um, that's part of my view as well, or not at all? Not really. Like, I know it helps people a lot. And I think whatever you believe in is good. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just not. I believe so. I really like. I cannot. I tried. I tried at some point to meditate. Mm -hmm. um, it's just not for me. I don't know. I I have other things on how to how to I don't know how to see my not no not other things but like I have other indicators and how I see myself with the like in connection to the world or other people and that is not pretty spiritual for me so what are your indicators then oh god um <laughs> I honestly don't know I need to uh, give me a minute please <laughs> sure yeah Mona I have a question to you so if if you're not if you feel that you have, you know, not there anymore in terms of meditating and, and the connection. So what are you doing now, you know, when, um, to, you know, ground yourself or, you know, I did, so, so, okay, let me rephrase this. So now, uh, you know, do you sometimes ask yourself about, you know, what is the meaning of life? You know, what am I supposed to do? And and if you have those questions coming up, how do you go about it? Yeah, of course, I I ask myself that. I think that's really mm. an important question. And um, I also I'm interested in personal growth a lot. I think uh, so. I listen to a lot of podcasts and stuff like that. So there, they also often ask these kinds of questions. Um, uh, I don't know. I feel like. For me, the best way to think about those things are on walks or sometimes in the train. I, I'm i a lot on the train, so mm -hmm. I like these uh, places to think because mm -hmm. then you can just look out and take your time and you see something else all the time, um, which can spark your ideas about something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I if I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> well, there is no right way. I think a wrong way. So, <laughs> but I, yeah. I, yeah, I understand what you mean. Yeah. Hannah, what about your indicators? I think for me, it's really how I feel when I'm around people or how I feel when I talk to people and sometimes of course you can always sense how they are feeling so if there's like you can always sense something and that is more something I can like that helps me see myself or my purpose maybe even mm -hmm. yeah I also like those walks like I have these huge headphones with like sound uh, noise cancelling everything and then I also go on walks with these to just block out everything. And then you can always like think about stuff that is going on or the meaning of life or your purpose even. Yeah. So so what is your purpose? Oh god. Um <laughs> I think my purpose is to just I think it changes throughout life. I think you have different purposes at different stages. But I think for now it's just to contribute my part to make the world a little better. If it's just making others happy or if it's really contributing something to social justice, mm -hmm. that's something else, but to just make it a better place. Yeah, I would also agree to that. Um, I think uh, my purpose is, I could also say my purpose is to 
um, contribute something to this world. But I would also say um, that sometimes or the purpose is just to be here. Um, and that's all, already enough. Hmm. I don't think that we always need to think that you need to be this or that, but during some difficult times, it's also okay to just be. Okay. Let, let me piggyback a little bit on that. On that and and uh, Because in, in the conversations that I had, and especially the last two years, many uh, individuals, but also organizations are talking about um, that we need to play a bigger game. What do you think is that bigger game? What comes up, you know, in your mind when you hear me say that? That many organizations or many people are saying we need to play a bigger game. Maybe it's more about be like starting to think of people or everyone as a collective and not many individuals next to each other, but more we're all in this together basically mm -hmm. and like we need to work towards a common goal maybe that's it mm -hmm. yeah i also thought about that um or maybe uh increasing the efforts i thought about increasing the efforts to mm -hmm. do something and to change something um but then at the same time i thought yeah we need to increase the efforts but also yeah, I don't know, stay grounded and connected or increase the connection so we don't get driven by this capitalist thought like, oh, we always need to do more and bigger and better mm. because that's not realistic. If, if I ask you, okay, do you... Give me an example of where you think then, um, because I, I heard you say the word connection. So where, you know, people or organizations or you've seen something where you, oh, this is a good example of how we should be connected. And then also an example of, yeah, that's an example of, you know, where the game is not big enough, you know, or, or mistakes are being made. So a positive example and a, and a negative example of that connection. Yeah, what to what for me first comes to mind is of a negative examples are those silos. Mm -hmm. Um, for example, uh, when looking at the SDGs, that um, you look at every indicator at every goal really. Um, I don't know, isolated, mm -hmm. um, and you're not working together, even though many of the goals are actually related. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, maybe that's a negative example. Mm -hmm. um, and a positive example, I don't know, maybe it's even a positive example that we are here. <laughs> I thought about that because, uh, yeah, there's some connection and some, uh, yeah, I don't know, a bit uh random way maybe how we ended in this call but um mm -hmm. i like that mm -hmm. that's what i thought about right thanks anna yeah i was thinking about the, like more positive examples of connections it's just all the places people come together so mm -hmm. if it's a university or even a student association it's just where people come together and they yeah i like those communities and maybe the communities itself need to be connected more but so they're not these separate things mm -hmm. but that's what i would say is a good example and a bad one yeah the the sdgs and maybe politics as well how they're disconnected from well the people usually <laughs> so it, yeah and so uh... To, to piggyback on the last thing you said, how how can we improve that? You know, the lack of connection, yeah, yeah, especially around politics. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I'm not sure. I think 
at least for me, like the people I talk to in my age, like they all feel unheard from politics mm. or politicians. Sorry, that's the word. And um, maybe there has to be some kind of communication channel forum between that. But I wouldn't know how to facilitate that yet. <laughs> You think it needs to happen, but you don't necessarily want to be involved, right? So, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> that. Yeah, I'm part of the problem. <laughs> um, I would like to go, you know, to um, the part where. Um, I'm going to ask you advice in terms of, yeah, you know that, you know, we're doing these discussions to to improve the connection of this, of my organization and our work with the younger population. Um, and yeah, any advice from, from you in terms of how do we, uh, should we, what should we do to attract and coll collaborate and ultimately maybe, you know, even co-create with youth? Um, you know, in our work to make this world more just and more sustainable. Any ideas? Brilliant ideas. No. Any any suggestions on how to go about this? I do like the idea of having like a younger version of the organization. That sounds weird. Uh, you know how parties always have like a subgroup of people who like the young party basically, and. Yeah, I think you already had that idea in the in the sheet. In mm -hmm. the sheet. But I really like that idea because then you can always attract people and you don't even have to have this well, you have to have a set core of people, but it doesn't have to be that big because if you have um special actions or initiatives, you can always be like, oh, only for this action you can participate now because then it's also not that time consuming if you just participate or join one initiative and then you're out again for a month or something and then you can rejoin mm -hmm. yeah i also think that's a good idea making it also making it easy to participate um because yeah of course everyone <laughs> um has uh yeah I don't know. I think it's uh, it's difficult to get people to do something, and then when you make it easy, obviously, um, it's easier. Um, but I think you already you you asked for for also for social networks what we are using. So I think you you're also already maybe doing something on these networks or thinking about including those networks more um i don't know i'm guessing <laughs> um i think that's might as i think that's for sure a good idea to also engage in the same channels as young people engage and i also think um it is would be smart to um to connect like this to connect to universities and to schools to have this direct link so people have an easy way to find you um yeah i don't know i i feel like it's difficult to come up with a um concrete idea um besides making it easy maybe i was thinking about what because we are such a society who thinks so much about themselves so what else could it could it could you offer them besides being part of it um yeah i don't know maybe think about that more and then you know i mean you're you're, you're alluding to um you know identifying what is the best social media channel um but then my thoughts are you know then probably you should also ask you know the, the students to to execute it because they know best you know how to talk with their fellow you know students and their friends instead of 
you know, I mean, all we have young people, of course, working for us, but you know, they are all graduated already. What we're talking about here is is you know more the from high school to student uh, levels. But then you have the challenge, of course, of time, right? Because you need to study as well. So, or is it something that you you know you or your fellow students could do on on the side as well? Because it will give some experience, especially in your field, maybe where where some of you might want to end up working for NGOs. So this is an experience that uh, will help them to will help you to work on your CV already. And uh... I think that would, that's a very good idea because I know there's also like the group running the social media of Bindesheim, like that's very popular because of the experience they gain from that. So if you advertise it like that, that should be, I think that should work, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also think you just need to make it attractive enough. I think time is always an issue, and but it's also always prioritization. Do you say it like this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. That you need just need to prioritize it better. And if it's important, to you then you will you will do it mm -hmm. and i think also as a student of course i mean you know what we're doing now having a conversation or a discussion about these topics and a lot you know a lot of information useful information is coming out of it from my perspective um is that something that um you know you would be willing you could do on a, on a regular basis you compare it with the innovation hub i we have advisors you know those are ceos and and some um people from who are working ngos but also in the private sector so we have sessions with them four times a year six times a year um where we ask them for inputs and basically we are on zoom and you know this is the problem that we have how would you go about this and then they give us advice and um and basically you know the discussion that we have now is similar right so i i'm trying to understand more so um yeah would you be willing to do that on a on a regular basis and do, are you getting something out of it or would you change the format that we're doing now or to do something else you send emails out or questionnaires but you have some ideas i think i like this format it's like i'm getting a lot of reflection out of it mm -hmm. <laughs> like reflecting yeah. on my own purpose and how i yeah. how i take basically so i think it, I get, again it depends on the time like if it's every week an hour that would be a bit much but if it's like I don't know every two months or once a month or something like that. I think people might be interested in it, mm. and it, I think it doesn't have to be the same people every time, but maybe just different people so they could like switch. Yeah. And then, would you prefer to have such a conversation, you know, without without an old person like me, you know, only with your <laughs> peers, or you know, is it is it kind of interesting to have somebody that totally looks different has a lot of perspective and you're not offending me if it, if it <laughs> would be without me so don't worry there um i think it, it it's interesting like that i feel feel like you're really good in asking questions <laughs> um so i think that's a big plus but when they are there is a person in our age who is also has the same um skills and uh, ask these questions then it is good i don't think it would be such a good idea to yeah just let young people do talk about those things without any uh framework because then i think yeah there will not come that much out of it Mm. Nana, you you agree or or not? No, okay. I agree. Or, or are you saying no? I can facilitate it. <laughs> but, uh... oh. No, but I think it, yeah, like Nana said, it depends on the skill. Like it, I don't, I th I don't think it really matters how old the person is as long as the skills are there. So mm. maybe yeah, as long as there's not just a young person for the sake of mm. a, like 
being a young person, you know? Yeah. Okay. I'm more asking the question in terms of, you know, would you, would most young folks feel more comfortable talking about these different topics among, you know, uh, people from the same generation instead of, uh, yeah, having an, an, an older person there? Or it doesn't matter as long as you were able to create a, you know, an environment that is, that you know is a safe environment. I think for me, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't know about others, but mm. for me, it's really just about the space and yeah, what comes out of it at the end. Okay. Yeah, I think I agree. And I would also say um, to the question from from a few a few conversations before that uh, I think the this format is is maybe more interesting than a questionnaire or something like mm -hmm. that I think people are more and maybe it's harder to find people who want to engage but then I think they are more more likely to give you more information Yeah, if if we would decide to um, to come up with a you know an, a, let's say an advisory a youth advisory council as part of the innovation hub, where we would you know organize maybe um, you know four calls in a year, and then with a the call I mean this the Zoom meeting. Um, yeah, would you sign up if that opportunity was there? Yeah, does, is that appealing? Or, or uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, for me. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Th yeah, thank you so much for uh, your willingness to share your wisdom. Okay, any any last questions for me? Can you send us the podcast if you do make one? Yeah, no, no, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then. Thank you very much. It was very interesting. No, oh, yeah. Th yeah, it was, it was <laughs> nice to talk. Thanks a lot. And good luck with everything you do. Well, yeah, we will keep in touch. Yeah, okay. we will. Bye. 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 for listening to walk talk listen please check us out on 100mile.org or follow us on facebook or instagram <laughs>